Hey guys, and welcome back to another Rocket League Tips video. Today, I'm going to be going over my top five training tips in Rocket League that are especially important for all you newer players. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I think most of my subs know that to get better at Rocket League, you should train at least a little bit, right? You aren't going to improve as much as you could if you only queue into online games. But even though most of you know that you should practice, I see so many people doing it the wrong way. So today, I'm going to share my top five tips to help you train smarter and improve as fast as possible. Before we get started though, I wanted to thank all the new subscribers because now a whopping 5% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. In all seriousness though guys, if you're looking to improve at Rocket League and you aren't currently subscribed to the channel, then please consider subbing if you like this video. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about how to train properly in Rocket League. All right, starting from the top, my number one training tip is to train in order. Now, just as a disclaimer, some of the tips in this video, like this one here, might seem obvious, when I say them, but I really want you to hear me out because the reality is there are tons of people that mess up when it comes to these things. But what do I mean when I say train in order? Well, training in order means learning mechanics step by step. Just like in the real world, you have to learn to walk before you can run. In Rocket League, it's no different. The problem is I see tons of players, new ones especially, seeing their favorite pros or YouTubers doing some crazy mechanics, and then what they do is they skip learning all the basics to try to shortcut to learn these mechanics. The truth is though, there are no shortcuts in Rocket League, and even though you might think you can learn the mechanic faster by trying to take a shortcut, at the end of the day, what you'll find is that you could have actually learned it way quicker if you just learned the basics before the more advanced steps. For example, if you're a new player and you want to learn how to say air dribble, it's probably not the best idea to go straight into an air dribble training pack and drill away expecting to figure things out. Instead, you should probably start by learning how to dribble on the ground, then learn maybe how to do an aerial, how to control your car in the air, and then only after you've got both those steps down should you finally try to incorporate the ball into a full-on air dribble. Now this doesn't just apply to air dribbling. Whatever the mechanic is, bottom line is you're going to learn much faster if you take things step by step. And this is something I preach time and time again, but trust me, if you practice this way, you'll improve much quicker than if you hadn't. Okay, moving on to tip number two, and tip number two is train what you're worst at. Now, this is a tip that sounds simple enough in theory, but it can often be hard to pinpoint your weaknesses and actually get yourself to focus on them. Now, if you're having trouble figuring out what your weak points are, this is where replay analysis comes in, and this is a large part of what I do in my private coaching. But for a lot of people, even once you pinpoint what you're bad at, it can still be hard to actually get yourself to train these things, right? We naturally want to focus on the things we can already do well. The truth is though, the way to improve the fastest is to bring up the aspects of your game that are the worst. Look at it this way. Imagine you're a coach looking at a player who has a bunch of different skill ratings and abilities in Rocket League. Let's say this player has a ground game of eight out of 10, their aerials are a four out of 10, and their positioning is a seven out of 10. If you wanted to make them improve the fastest, what would you tell them to go practice? Obviously, if we look at it this way, you'd probably go tell the player to practice aerials because they would clearly benefit from this the most. But when it's ourselves playing, we tend not to see things this way, and instead, we only want to drill what we're already good at because it's easier to do that than actually having to struggle on the things we're not so good at. But if you really want to get better fast, train what you're worst at, and I promise you'll see the most progress that way. All right, on to tip number three, and it's train like you play. What I mean by this is when you're training, you want to simulate game speed as much as you possibly can. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. And this is something that I find even myself messing up with time and time again. As an example, imagine you just watched my video on how to aerial faster and you're doing an aerial training pack to try to improve your car control. In a training pack, 
a lot of us would see this ball come at us and we'd jump instantly and sort of hover until the ball gets to us so that we could be sure we get an easy hit. In a game situation though, you'd never play this way. For one, you'd be driving towards the ball on the ground and you'd never pre-jump this hard. And on top of that, if this was a real game, you'd have to rush to beat your opponent to the ball, so you wouldn't have the time to pick a perfect line to the ball and wait around. Point is, when you're training, try to have that same in-game mentality no matter what you're doing. So if you're training saves, for example, don't just try to save the ball anyway. Try to imagine you're in a game and there's another opponent waiting to follow it up, so you really have to focus on saving the ball to your corner. Now this doesn't just apply to saves, whatever it is, try to bring that in-game speed to your drills, and it should help a lot with actually transferring your skills from training to ranking up in online games. All right, tip number four is train more often, not longer. Now, I talk about this a lot in my other videos, but the basic idea here is it's better to train more frequently rather than just more, period. This is because of something called diminishing marginal returns, where, say, for the first 20 minutes of training, you are getting a lot out of it, you're attentive, and you're actively learning things. But after a certain amount of time, you start to lose focus, and the actual quality of each additional minute gets lower and lower. This is why I say it's better to train for, say, 20 minutes a day over three days rather than for one hour long session. Because if you spread out your training sessions equally, there will be more quality there than if you just grind it for an hour straight. So if you can, really try to train more frequently rather than just more, period. All right, on to the final tip. Tip number five is train as much as you play. Now, one of my friends on YouTube named Delaney made an awesome video where he only trained for 50 days straight, and as good as that might sound, in theory, it actually didn't work all that well. Now, I won't spoil his entire video here, but I thought, who better to talk about this tip than him? So I got him to come on today to speak for himself. So Delay, how did 50 days straight of only training go for you? Yeah, it's safe to say it went about as well as I expected it would. And by that I mean not super well. There was definitely this small, hopeful part of me that thought I'd turn into some sort of mechanical monster after the 50 days. But there's a huge difference between learning shots in a training environment and applying them in a real game. A training environment is relaxed and doesn't really emulate the high pressure reality. So training is a great tool, but something that shouldn't be a crutch to lean on, especially if you're trying to improve as fast as possible. So I guess long story short, I learned the best way to effectively improve is by training while you integrate that training into in-game situations. Balance is definitely the key. Yeah, you said it best, man. Balance is definitely key here. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Honestly, man, it was my pleasure. So thank you so much for having me on and supporting a small little channel like myself. Yeah, of course, man. If you keep it up, you're definitely not going to be a small channel for long. If you want to show support, guys, for Delaney, make sure to check out the card I'm going to throw on screen now, and I'll have his channel linked in the description below. He's an up-and-coming content creator. His videos are awesome, so I highly recommend you go check him out if you're interested in improving at Rocket League. All right, guys, but to recap, what are the most important things to think about when you're training? Well, for one, you need to train in order. You can't be putting the cart before the horse. Two, you need to train what you're bad at. Training what you're already good at just isn't that helpful. Third, you need to train like you play. You can't expect to play faster if you train slow. Four, you need to train smarter, not harder. Playing once a day for a few days is better than mindlessly grinding all day long. And finally, five, you need to balance your training and in-game time. If you only train, you might get good at training, but at some point, you have to translate what you learn into a real game environment, and there's only one way to learn how to do that. Okay guys, those are my top five tips for training in Rocket League. Hopefully this was helpful, and I promise if you do stick to these guidelines, you'll find yourself improving and getting better way faster than you were before. Before the video ends though, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random subscriber to win two months worth of free private coaching from me. Now, normally I only coach my Patreon members, but if you get picked, I'll coach you for four sessions over a span of two months 
completely free of charge. So if you want to enter for a chance to win that, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and join my Discord linked in the description below, because I pick all my giveaway winners over there. I also run tons of other giveaways on my Discord, and it's an awesome place to find people to play with, get help from other players, and just overall support the channel. So make sure to check it out if that sounds interesting. Anyways, though, guys, that's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.